Goblin launch detected. Uh-oh. Hey gang, using the promo code MTGMUDSTA, one word, all caps, will get you 10% off orders of $10 or more at Flipside Gaming, Original Magic Cart, and orders of singles at Multizone. If they don't have what you're looking for, you could check out TCG Player and use my affiliate link to help support the channel. Looking for a way to bling out your deck and not spend a fortune? Alter Sleeves can help with that, and you can help with the channel at the same time by using my affiliate link. Or, if you're looking to join the Goblin Gang, you can always support me through Patreon. Hey gang, Flipside Gaming has another giveaway, this time for Commander Legends. Between November 2nd, 2020 and November 20th, 2020, any order of $10 or more will get you entered to win a box of Commander Legends. Alternatively, you can send a stamped, self-addressed envelope or postcard to Flipside Gaming at the following address. It's one entry per person, so good luck and have fun. Today's game is their multi-zone matchup, with me playing my Timna and Vile Smasher deck. I keep Demonic Tutor, Cabal Coffers, Ghostly Prison, Planes, Smoldering Marsh, Bolus' Citadel, and Yawgmoth's Will. We've got Chris rocking Moldratha, keeping a villainous wealth, Overgrown Tomb, The Mending of Dominaria, Grave Pack, Splendid Reclamation, Forest, and Life from the Loam. Sam is playing his Queen Marquesa deck with a secret, and he keeps three Shadowborn Apostles, a Swamp, an Edgewalker, Athreos God of Passage, and an Urberg. New to the channel is Reese, who's playing Rata, keeping a Forest, a Stomping Grounds, Explosive Vegetation, Fatal Frenzy, Reforce the Soul, Night Soil, and Sarkin Vol. Chris wins the die roll and starts us off. For the first land of the game, Chris plays a Polluted Delta. Sam plays an Urborg, and he casts his first Shadowborn Apostle. Reese plays a Tap Stomping Grounds, passing to me. I play a Tap Smoldering Marsh, passing. At the end of turn, Chris cracks his fetch to find a breeding pool. Chris plays a forest for his turn and casts Life from the Loam to return his delta to his hand. Sam plays a Swamp and casts two more Shadowborn Apostles. Reese plays a Forest and drops Rata. I play a Plains and cast Demonic Tutor in my main phase, passing while I search. Chris stretches his life from the loam instead of drawing for turn, and mills his top three. He plays the delta again, sacrificing it immediately and losing one to find another land. It's Watery Grave, which he takes two to have come in untapped. Chris then recasts the loam, returning some lands to his hand, and passes to Sam. Sam draws and casts a Shadowborn Apostle. He has no land to play, sadly, passing to Reese. Reese draws and plays a mountain. He then taps out for explosive vegetation, finding two more basics and passing to me while searching. I play a land for turn and simply cast Ghostly Prison, passing to Chris. Chris dredges his life from the loam again and we see him milling three more cards into his graveyard. He then casts the loam again, returning two lands to hand and then plays at an overgrown tomb, taking two to have it come in untapped. He then passes, discarding down to seven. Sam draws and still cannot find a land. He can at least cast Swiftfoot Boots, and he does so, passing. Reese draws and plays a forest. He drops an Eternal Witness, who returns to hand the explosive vegetation, which doesn't stay in hand for long as he recasts it to go and find two more basics. He then passes while searching. I play Cabal Coffers, thanking Sam for his help with the Urborg. I then pass through my combat step, and Chris cycles his two cycled lands, drawing a card from each, as I pass to him. Chris stretches his life from the loam once more, filling up his yard. He doesn't cast the loam for once, and instead pays four mana for Splendid Reclamation, getting four lands from his graveyard onto his board tapped. He then plays a Flooded Strand, and passes to Sam. Sam draws, but it's not a land, and goes on the offensive. He swings all of his apostles at Chris, and they deal four. Reese asks for a cards in hand count, and then drops Sarkin Vol. He plays a greater good, 
and up ticks his walker to pump his board by plus one plus one and give them haste. The Eternal Witness then hits Chris for three, and he passes to me. I play a Reliquary for turn, and cast Mana Vault. I tap the Vault to help activate the Coffers, making enough mana to cast Bowles' Citadel. I look at my top card, and cast Phyrexian Arena off the top, losing three life. I then look at the next card, and then just pass to Chris. Chris sacrifices a Flooded Strand at the end of turn, losing one to go and find a land. With that ability on the stack, I cast Rakdos Charm to exile Chris's yard as he finds a Sunken Hollow. Chris untaps and draws, playing his own Cabal Coffers and thanking Sam. He activates it for a lot of mana, and taps more lands to help cast Endicar Resurgent. He still has 6 black mana floating, which he uses 4 of and taps his Breeding Pool for the needed blue and green to cast his commander. He draws from the Resurgent trigger, and then uses the remaining two floating, and taps his fetch land for two black thanks to Urborg being out, to help cast Grave Pact. We then see Azusa join the party, followed by the god eternal Bontu, who enters, and Chris sacrifices some lands and Azusa to draw some cards. First though, he catches up on the Resurgent triggers by drawing from his casting of Azusa and Bontu, and then draws from the Bontu trigger. With Chris sacrificing Azusa, he gets a Grave Pact trigger, and Sam sacrifices an Apostle, while Reese sacrifices his witness. With nothing else, Chris passes while discarding down to 7. Sam prays for a land drop, and sadly falls on deaf ears. He equips the Apostle with the boots to at least do something, and passes. Reese draws, and down ticks Sarkin to steal Muldratha. He then goes to combat, swinging Chris's own commander at him, and rata at Sam. With Rana attacking, Reese gets two red mana from the on attack trigger, and Sam and Chris decide to both just take the hits. Before moving to damage though, Reese uses that floating red and taps one more red to cast Fatal Frenzy on Muldratha. This pumps the elemental by plus six plus zero and gives it trample. He's not done just yet though, and he casts Hunter's Insight on it as well. Chris then takes 12, and Reese draws 12. In his post combat main phase, Reese then sacrifices the pump Muldratha to greater good, drawing another 12 cards and then discarding 3. He's drawn 24 cards at this point just from Muldratha doing stuff, and he discards 3 lands to greater good. He plays a Reliquary Tower as his land drop, and then casts a Gruul Signet, and then casts Ranger's Path, going to his library to find 2 Forest cards as he passes to me. I lose one of my upkeep to my tap Vault, and then one to the Arena, drawing from it, and then move to my draw step, drawing for turn. I look at my top card thanks to the Bolus' Citadel, and I play a land. I then activate the Cabal Coffers for 6 using some of it to help cast Mana Geyser. This gains me 18 red mana from Reese and Chris, and I cast off the top Shreds of Sanity, losing 3 life, but returning the Demonic Tutor and Rakdos Charm to hand before discarding a card and exiling the spell. I then recast the Tutor, find a card, and once I'm done shuffling, Look at my top card again with the Citadel. I still have some floating mana though, using it for a Gilded Lotus, and then recast the Rakdos Charm once more to exile Chris's yard. I'm not quite done with my turn though, bringing up Vile Smasher before passing to Chris. Chris draws and casts Tatiova in his main phase. He plays a Forest, gaining one life, and drawing a card as it enters from Tatiova's trigger. He then activates the Coffers, making a lot of black mana, and recasts Muldratha. He realizes he should have drawn from the Resurgent, grabbing a card from Tatiova, and then one for the Muldratha cast. We then see a Sakura Tribe Elder, who draws Chris another card, and he moves to combat. Bontu heads at Sarkin Vol, who once the Crocodile God connects with, gets taken out. In his post-combat main phase, Chris then casts a Soul Ring, and uses the one black floating mana from the Sunken Hollow, and taps his Soul Ring to cast Diabolic Intent, sacrificing Bontu. This has Chris resolving a Grave Pack trigger, and we all sacrifice a creature as he goes to tutor for a card and pass it to Sam. Sam draws and kinda of finds something. He casts a Song of the Damned, which gives him two black mana because of how many creatures he has in his yard. He then taps his Urborg for a third mana, and casts Murder on Muldratha. The Elemental gets taken out, and Sam passes having actually done something this game. Reese draws, and adds it to his massive hand. He plays a forest, and activates the Signet and some other lands to cast Bane of Progress. With the Bane hitting the field, 
its trigger goes on the stack, and Chris sacrifices his Sakura Tribe Elder to go and find a land. This gives him a great pack trigger, forcing his opponents to sacrifice a creature. This means the Bane will sadly not be around once its own trigger resolves, and it doesn't get any of those sweet counters. Sam is away from the table at this point, but will sacrifice one when he returns. Reese then plays an Inferno Titan, who takes out Sam's Apostle, and then deals two to Sam. I draw for turn, and play a Swamp. I activate the Coffers for seven, casting Yogmoth's Will. I then flashback Mana Geyser for 20 red, and cast a Gilded Lotus. I then bring back the Mana Vault, and recast Demonic Tutor. I go into my library to find a card, and I cast it immediately, resolving worse fears and targeting Reese to take his next turn. I then recast the Bulls' Citadel from my graveyard, and look at my top card. Sadly, it's a land, and all I can do is recast File Smasher before passing. Chris plays a Reliquary Tower, and draws a card, and gains a life from Tatiova. He then activates the Coffers, and taps the rest of his mana for a massive Torment of Hailfire, where X is 12. Sam discards his hand to survive at 8 life, while Reese doesn't mind the spell at all, discarding his 12 worst cards from hand. I discard and sacrifice enough permanence, and only drop down to 5 life. Chris then goes to combat, and hits me with Tatiova, passing to Sam. Sam draws, and passes. Reese draws, and passes his hand to me as I take his turn. I play out an end raise Forerunners, who hit the field and pump his Inferno Titan. I then cast Samet, Tyrant Smasher, giving the Titan the pump and scrying one. I put the card on the bottom, and head to combat. I swing the Inferno Titan and Forerunners at Chris, dealing exactly enough to take him out. I also use the Inferno Titan's on attack trigger to deal 3 to Samet. I then unfortunately pass to myself, hoping for a good draw. I draw, and play a Battlefield Forge, and look at my top card. Unfortunately my life total is too low for me to be able to cast it, and it's not looking good, so I pass to Sam, hoping he can somehow save us. Sam draws, and plays a Shadowborn Apostle. This doesn't save us, but Reese wants to make certain of it as we move to his turn. He plays out a Hellkite Charger, and then down ticks Samet for her final counter, giving the Forerunners the pump. This allows him to swing enough at both Sam and I to take us out, winning the game. Game review time. So I think when Sam kept his opening in hand, he planned on drawing at least one more land. Unfortunately, that didn't really pan out for him, and as we saw, he really struggled to be in this game at all. Chris, on the other hand, certainly ramped very hard, often and consistently, either through a fetch land or by resolving his Zendikar Resurgent. I do think he made a slight miscalculation casting the Torment of Hailfire, since Reese was the only one who was able to get out of it unscathed, since he had such a huge hand and could discard cards to it. If you're at all familiar with my Timna and Vile Smasher deck, you know that when I cast Yogmoth's Will, I typically try and go for a win. In this game, unfortunately, I just tried to stay alive and get some value. That is not what I want to be doing with that kind of spell, and it really showed. I think Reese did a pretty good job of playing this game, balancing ramp and draw consistently, and never really being that big of a threat other than having some decent beaters on the board. It just came down to him being in the right place at the right time near the end, and he was able to clinch the win. Please be sure to tune in every Monday and Thursday at 11am Eastern Standard Time for a guaranteed new video. You can also follow me on Twitter at MTGMudsta. You can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash mtgmudsta. And lastly, you can check me out when I stream at twitch.tv slash mtgmudsta. This video is brought to you in support by my patrons. If you're looking for a way to help out the channel, please be sure to visit the link below. Thank you all for watching this video, and don't forget, friends are just opponents you haven't eliminated yet.